Hello, everybody. My name is Adrian Iliasiu, and I'm an engineer with the DevNet team at Cisco. So in this part of the course, we're going to go and continue exploring and building on the code that we have so far in our application. And so far, we've seen the previous lessons, our class for logging in, getting, and posting requests to the API. We've also had a look at device list, template list, and attached list uh, functions that were associated to a CLI command with the, with the help of the click library. Next, we're going to go and explore the attach and detach functions and complete our five um, requirements for our application for, that we've set at the beginning. So let's go back in code. Uh, Visual Studio Code ID here in, our, in my case. You can use whatever ID you want and prefer, or even a text editor, doesn't really matter. Um, but here, let's go over the attach function. So in this case, we see that we have many more options. Um, we have an option to specify the template that we want to attach. We have an option to specify the target so which is the device within the fabric? In our case, it will be a VEdge device. And we need to specify the ID of that target device and also the ID of the template. And then we have the option also to specify the host name, the system IP, the loopback IP, which is um, our client side, service side of the fabric, represented by a loopback uh, interface in our VPN one um, on that VEdge. And then we have the gigabit interface, gigabit zero, which is part of our VPN zero, the transport VPN within the SD1 fabric, and also specify the site ID here. So we have, we see here, seven options that we can specify. We can make this as prompts and make it interactive with the user, specify one at a time, or we can specify all the options in one line. And this is what we went out for here. There's no prompt, as you can see. It's only the help uh, to let the, the user know what they actually need to provide with that specific option. So like I said, no prompts, one line, everything. And then here, we start defining our function. Differently from the other one so far, we see that it takes actually all the variables here, all the parameters of the functions are going to get transferred from the user input at the beginning. SysIP, the loopback, the gigabit interface, and also the site ID. So all of these parameters, inputs for this function will get transferred and uh, input basically by the user. Similarly to what we had so far here, we have uh, some text information for the user to know what this command is supposed to accomplish and also how to run the command. So we see here, you should run it with the attach option and specify the templates, targets, and all the other options and parameters. If we go down, we see, we echo back to the user, to the console, here attempting to attach template, and then we build our payload. Like I mentioned in the previous lesson, in this case, the attach function will be a, a function that will use the post request function from our, from our class. In that case, it needs a payload. The payload looks like this. Of course, it's in JSON format. And if you ask yourself, OK, how do I know this payload? How do I get to this? How do I know the format? The explanation is, of course, is in the documentation. So if you remember, I've shown you this before in the previous lesson. But here is the link to the product documentation to the vManage REST APIs. And here you can actually see an example of a request and response. In this case, I'm looking for the CLI template, how to attach it. So it's, I see here the URL, the endpoint. I see the method. I see that a device template JSON uh, is required parameter. I see that the content type 
is application JSON. And then down here, I see an example of a request and response. So what, I've, what I did is I've taken this. I also monitor with developer tools. So that's another way of figuring out. You go into the graphical user interface. And in your favorite browser, you can use developer tools to actually see the exchange of data between the graphical user and the actual endpoint uh, and the REST API. So here, if we have a quick look at the template, we see that we set different parameters. We set an MTP server template list. We set a um, VPN zero. This is our transport VPN. So this is the gigabit zero zero interface that we'll, we will set with our template. Uh, VPN 512, which is our out of band um, management template, will use the ETH0 interface. And then our service VPN, our VPN template one, which is kind of like our client, in this case, um, a simulation of a client service side environment of the fabric, will use the loopback one template for that. We also have a banner and an SNMP template. So if we could quickly have a look at this feature, just let's look at the NTP server template to see. Very easy. You define the template name, the description, and then you specify your servers, if there are any authentication keys, and then you specify the keys here. So the templates, the device templates, build on top of feature templates, feature templates, Think of them like this, the NTP server one, the SNMP, the banner, the different interfaces in different VPNs. So each one of them is a feature or your AAA configuration. And then you combine them all. In this case, all my eight feature templates are combined into this one device template, which has one device attached to it. Um, so going back to code here, that's where you get the payload from. You can also use developer tools, like I said, or the documentation. And what I'm doing here, I'm passing all the parameters from here. Right, The template that I get from the user gets propagated here. The target will go even down. So all of this will get all this information that I get from the user will get propagated into my payload and will be sent over the API to the vManage instance. Uh, and the mount point that I'm using here will be this. So this is my mount point or my endpoint or my resource. Resource. The payload is the JSON that I've just built. And I'm using, in this case, like I said for the first time, I'm using the post request function of my instance of my uh, REST uh, API lib class. And I'm storing that in the response. And then I'm just printing the response, right? So the response will have the output of my post request. So that is pretty much the attach function, um, as you can see uh, differently, is just the payload that we need to build. And we need to, we're going to build on top of the information provided by the user through the CLI. So let's go and try it out. If I go back here, I'm going to get first a list of devices. So if I do Python, sdwan.py, device list. And I want to attach VEdge 3 to this template, let's say. VEdge 4, I know that it's already attached. So I'm going to also attach VEdge 3. So if I do a template list here also, to have the template ID handy, then I can do attach and help with the help option. 
I can actually see what I need to execute successfully this command, right? So it's, it's not going to be interactive. It's not going to be a prompt to the user. It's going to be all in one line. As you want to attach, I'm going to specify the template ID right here, the target, which will be my VH3, the host name, if I want to change it, the system IP, the loopback, the gigabit zero zero, so the loopback will be my VPN one interface. The gigabit will be my um, VPN zero interface, and then the site ID. So before we make any changes, actually let's double check in the interface and see that the edge zero three. BH03, let's have a look at uh, the interfaces on this edge node. We see here we have a loopback interface with an IP address of 111 slash 24. We see the system ID. So let's change, in this case, the site ID and the loopback IP by applying the template to this device. So if I go back, And I do template. I'm going to copy paste this value. This is the template that I want to use and apply. My target is my VH3. VH3, copy paste then we have to specify the host name host name I'm going to keep it v edge 03 for now the sysip I don't want to change it so I'm going to keep it to 62 and then I want to change the loopback IP address in this case to 222 slash 24 The gigabit interface IP, I'm going to keep it the same as 20, 62 slash 24. And then the site ID, I'm going to modify it from 500 to 600, let's say. So let's make sure I have all the correct information here. So the template. ID we see here, we passed it as the first parameter. Uh, we got it basically from here. This information gets passed in there. The target is the ID of V edge 3. The host name, we keep it the same as VH3. The system IP, we keep the same. But then we change the loopback IP. Instead of having it at 111, slash 24, we changed it to 222. The gigabit interface in VPN 0, our transport VPN stays the same. And then I changed the site ID from 500 to 600 in this case. So let's run this command. And if we go back to our browser, We see here push feature template. And this is in progress of being applied the template to the device. In our case, we get as an output an action ID. So we get right here push feature template. If you read the documentation of the API, you can actually monitor this action ID every second, every second, whatever you want to check for its status. Whenever the template is successfully applied, you'll get a success back as a parameter and you can then continue proceed through your code. Um, so you have that option because it's an asynchronous call, right? It's sent and then you have to pull the system to find the status of your action whenever you got completed. 
Here we see that it's a success now. So the template was successfully applied to our VH3. Let's double check and make sure that our interface, Lubeck interface has been changed and also that our site ID has been changed. So if I go device dashboard and I do interface, I see here indeed that my Lubeck interface is now changed from 111 to 222 and also my site ID is 600. I do keep the same IP on the gigabit interface and also my system IP stays the same. So you've seen how you can very easily apply templates in a programmatic fashion, right? So you can also check for the action ID whenever it's completed and proceed in your code, but very fast, easy in a programmatic fashion. Instead of going through all the steps in the GUI, you can have this automatically done for you either by a user or by a third party solution system. So now if we go back to the code, we've had a look at the attach function. Next will be the detach. So we attached a template to one of the devices. Now, how can we detach that template in case we need to change it, swap them around or, or whatever the use case may be? In this case, we create a new function. By now, this should be, um, should be fairly clear to everybody. It takes two options, the target function, the target option, and then the system IP. So the target is what device do you want to attach, to, to deattach, to detach basically from, from the template, and what's the system IP of that device. We have the help, and also, as usual, a bit of help for the user to know how to call this option of the CLI. We see here the target ID and the system IP. We echo back to the user attempting to detach template in the next line, and then we build our payload. So our payload looks like this. Again, you would have to go in the documentation. If you scroll down, you see the, you should see the detach option. Feature template, no. Detach device templates right here. So you see the endpoint that you need to go to. It's a post device template, JSON. It is a required parameter. So that's the payload that we're specifying. And the payload looks like this, similar to this, which if you have a look at it, if you go back in the code, pretty much the same thing. And important to mention here is that also we pass the target ID and the system IP as parameters to our detach function. And then they will go actually into the actual payload as strings, right? So that's where we build the payload. And the URL that we're trying to access with this, our mount point or our resource, it is template config device uh, mode CLI. Payload, we take it from here. It's there. We use, again, the post request function of our instance of the class. We store the response into the response variable, and then we print it out to the user so that you see the action ID, right? Basically, the response contains the action ID. Then you can, after that, monitor for status and know once it completed the attachment or the detachment, in this case, of your template. Perfect. And then next, basically, to our initial CLI application, we add all the options. And in the main function, we just call CLI. So when you run the script initially, this is what gets run, the CLI. The CLI application, based on click library, has these commands, and each command has a specific function attached to it. And we're using the REST API lib class 
to authenticate get requests and post requests. So let's see how we detach now the template. So we attach the template to VH3. Let's say we want to detach it. So if I go to Python sdwan.py Uh, detach, uh, detach, help. We get here the help uh, information that we specified in the script, and then an example command of how to run it. We specify the target ID and then the system IP. So let me just refresh the device list so that I can more easily have access to the uh, target ID and the system IP for VH3. So by device list. And I want to detach now target is my VH, VH3, which is this ID right here. I copy paste it and then I need to specify the system IP this IP which is 44462 enter script runs go back to the browser and we check the view manage window go here and we check the actually the detach action that we initiated has an action ID, right? Like I was saying, the action ID is right here. You can monitor for this and check status um, every second, every two seconds, however you feel comfortable. And then once it's completed, you can proceed through your code. So that's the action ID right there. In our case, we see that the template was successfully detached. So let's have a look at it. Uh, if we go dashboard, actually configuration, templates, we see that device is attached. It's only VH4 now. So VH3 is no longer attached and basically the detach action was completed successfully. So, so far in this lesson, we went over the attach and detach functions. We saw that both of them use the post request option for, in our class, the function for posting the requests. And we saw that the, especially the attach function takes a lot of options. We could have made this prompt base so that we ask the user. We did it all in one line. And then the detach function also, which takes the target system ID and then the system IP of that, um, of the device that we're trying to detach. The payload, much smaller in this case, we do a post request and we print the response. We have the action ID and based on that we can monitor the status of the action when it's completed successfully or not. In our case, the attachment, both the attachment and detach of the template were successful. We've seen that in our task completed over here, these two today. So we've seen how easy it is to start interacting in a programmatic fashion with the REST API. We've had a look at Swagger documentation and we tried out a couple of calls in that, in that option. We've also used Postman. We generated code with Postman. Then we started developing our own code. So we started developing our class for logging in, for sending and getting and posting requests. We've had a look at the libraries, request library, click and tabulate. And we developed on top of those and we added new functionality with our own um, options. And then we built our class uh, for logging in, getting requests. Then 
we started building our CLI application right here. We started adding five commands. That's what we planned at the beginning. Get a list of all the devices, get a list of the templates, make sure to get a list of the devices that are attached to a specific template, and then attaching and detaching templates to specific devices. So device list, we went over it. It's just, uh, we use the get request, also with the template list. The endpoints are different, of course, but um, code can be reused between all these functions. And then we went over the attach functions and detach. So that's all I had. Thank you so much. Hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let us know. Become a DevNet member if you are not already. Uh, as the community asks us, and we are more than happy to help.